Howdy everyone, uh, and we're doing a bit of speed run now. Uh, we're going to try to do something educational for a change. And this is my speed run account, where I started at the lowest point possible, and I'm trying to educate. And you can follow my previous uh, games here, uh, everyone on how to get better at chess and what things to look out for. Make sure you throw a like and a subscribe my way. Yeah, press that button. Cheers. So we're starting with d4, and we're playing the 2187. We're now nearly 2300, so games are going to get much tougher. And I'm going to now go into a variation. We won't play the Jabava London, which we've done mainly. I'm going to play, I would say, a more mainline system, the Queen's Gambit. Uh, I'm expecting d5. Uh, I'm going to follow this up by putting my knight behind the pawns, all about controlling the center. And um, then d5 is main line, Slav. And you need to know what you're doing in most of these main lines. One, one thing I, I often do, which is a good approach, is look for sort of side lines in main lines so you don't have to learn as much theory. And this is a very heavily analyzed position, but quite shortly, Ginger GM, check out gingergm.com, will be bringing out a video course on what I'm going to play here. I nearly always now take this pawn, just so black can't take on c4. And now bishop f4 is the standard move. But this little move here is extremely interesting. And I, I, I played a very nice game in this um, some time ago. My opponent playing queen b6, the computer's top choice. So my alarm bells are actually ringing here. Uh, because unless my opponent knows this variation... Queen b6 is um, not very human-like. So he either knows this very rare variation or he's going for the computer's top choice because why would you play queen b6? Now, I wish I could remember the theory. I, I, I haven't looked at this line for a while. Uh, but we continue with our standard approach of e4 in this position here. And this queen b6 move has given us the computer's top choice, but there's a very secret line here which my friend Ingvar of Iceland showed me. And it was like, it's quite a deep line, 18 moves. And obviously, if I was going to play this in a tournament, I'd refresh myself memory wise on these lines, but um, my memory is not particularly great enough to, to memorize this off the top of my head. And I think the point of Black's play is that Black generally wants to play e5 and play bishop c5 so maybe i should try to start remembering this now so taking here the whole point of this opening system it's got a very boring reputation but the whole point is now that we take back this way and we get a pretty decent center here so my opponent does follow up with e5 the standard idea and god it's such a nice line this but i can't remember entirely how it goes now if we take here knight g4 is a bit annoying is that right take knight g4 bishop check knight c6 so i'm going to go for d5 the most natural move playing in the center and i'm just trying to remember this long line which again ingvar showed me in a pub in iceland two years ago when I may have had one too many Icelandic beers. Now this move now doesn't look as good to me because I do have this check. My, my opponent's not using a computer, by the way. It's just my paranoia there and just call me crammers. And this check here, I thought would be quite problematic now because black wants to block the check, but then he drop, drops his knight. So he has to move his king and obviously you don't want to move your king too early. Now, there is there is a threat here, so I, I, I must deal with this threat. But I'm glad now that we're out of theory. I'll try to pause the video and show you this amazing line after this game. But um or shall I just save it for the DVD? I'll save it for the DVD. You know, you've got to you've got to support the heavy analysis. If you buy the DVD, you'll get the line when it comes out. Because I need to double check things there. Okay, so how do we stop the queen coming in here? So we need to cover this square. So we either bring the knight out or we bring the queen out, someone like f3. I, I kind of like queen f3 because it just covers uh, these two squares. So it stops that knight from coming in. 
And hopefully I'll be able to kick the knight away at some point of h3. My opponent has some bishop b4 move here, which might be logical, because then he's threatening queen takes my bishop. So I'd have to do something with my bishop, maybe a4 um, in that position. I don't think knight e2 works because he'll go queen takes here. So bishop b4 is critical. Other moves seem quite passive here. He can maybe, I've just realized, play knight takes h2. That's a weird little move. Rook takes, queen takes here. Uh, I didn't see that one, but I'm not too worried because after something like queen g3, his knight would have to come back. And yeah, he wins a pawn, but he loses a, like a whole tempo there. And when your king's in the middle of the board, it's very risky to lose tempo. You might be able to go pawn grabbing when your king's safe, but I wouldn't go pawn grabbing, grabbing when your king's like uh, stuck in no man's land. And, it, you know, it's not so bad because it's got a pawn in front of it, but it still looks quite exposed. You know, at some point, I'm hoping to get my king safe first. I might... I'm, oh, don't do that. Don't pre-move. Bloody hell. That would have been a nasty pre-move because then he'd have won my rook as well. Or would it have been a piece of genius with a counter-attack? One of those pre-move... One of those mouse slips that actually turns out to be bloody a miracle. Reminds me of that story of... Um, if you put like an unlimited, I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this story, unlimited supply of monkeys on typewriters into uh, an infinity room or whatever, and you got them to randomly type letters, at some point, logically, one of those monkeys would write the entire works of Shakespeare. Um, uh, it might take them a while, yeah, that's a give me, but if they're just sitting there for all eternity writing random random some, some mathematician could probably work this out what the what the odds are is anyone clever enough out there don't, don't ask me i'm no mathematician but um the same thing goes for a mouse slip one day i'm going to mouse slip and it's going to be a piece of genius just waiting for that day um so i i think i think bishop b4 is logical and then and then like i say a4 is all right but i'm, I'm also thinking maybe i would have a3 kicking that away so after bishop b4, I might just simply bring this bishop back so it's out of harm's way, somewhere like d3. And my general plan is to go h3, and as soon as this bishop moves, my opponent loses control of e3, so I can play bishop e3 myself. Now another move my opponent could try to play here is bishop to c5. This move um, is piling on a bit of pressure there. Uh, I've always got knight h3, but then he might better try to put something into e3. Um, he's having a long think here. Let's hope he hasn't uh, run away somewhere. Um, and after bishop... Where's that? Egypt? Is that Yeah, Egypt. After bishop c5, um, maybe I can also think there, but it feels like I should cover this one then. So maybe knight h3. And then my queen could be useful coming down here as well. Um, I just want to try to get a little bit more development going in my position here. Something like h3, maybe move my bishop out, maybe move my knight out, something along those lines. Um, so my opponent is having a long, long think. And one thing you should always do, this is especially true when you're playing a tournament. If you really want to get better at chess, head over, get into a tournament play the longer time limit games you can only get so good at playing quick time limits and a good thing about a tournament is that uh you know you get to think properly but one thing i always recommend is when your opponent is thinking don't go and wander around and you know chess is a really tough mental sport and um you should really be spending your time just sitting there calculating uh, and that that's really key about if your opponent plays this, have it covered, have it covered, have it covered, you know. Uh, there's no real time to relax. So my opponent did play this logical move, and we've got to always look at what our opponent's threat is when he plays a move, and the threat is to take this bishop. Uh, and I think I'm just going to move this bishop back. Uh, if his queen ever comes in, I have knight to e2, and that covers the knight, attacks the queen. Knight e2 may well be a, quite a pleasant move. Now he's moving his bishop here. And, and another move did occur to me in these, this position. It is moving the knight to a4. But unfortunately, after queen check, bishop here, he can take that one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with knight h3. Because I think I should cover this square. And it's actually a very interesting position here. Um, he can now throw a piece into e3. 
and I'd have to eliminate that piece but instead he's keeping it very solid and he's stopping me coming this way also not a bad idea now I really like this knight a4 idea I, I want to make this work so I could therefore cover his check here by moving my bishop to d2 that's kind of sensible but whenever I whenever I have I been sensible this one straight away I just can't see a good response to the check in that position I could also play a3 and then maybe come there but then he has another check and after bishop d2 if he takes on this one it's very hard to get rid of his knight now I can go rook here queen here it feels like I should have a good move there but I can't see one and very interesting position this actually really really rich because I can't castle this feels like the right move sometimes you just have to go your instinct I'm, okay I'm gonna play because I'm not too worried about one pawn I'm not not worried about him taking one pawn I mean his queen's gonna run around I'm gonna get tempo on his queen and he now plays another good move he spots my threat so this is what happens around this level um, when you get over 2,000, the big difference I know is that you're not just concentrating your own plans, you're concentrating your opponent's plans. This is so important for you guys to get better. If you want to break through to this level, you have to think, what's my opponent trying to do? And sometimes take steps out to stop that. Now, it looks like it stops my knight coming here, but I'm still thinking about this move. Bishop takes, queen takes g4, some pressure. Uh, very interesting. I could also now evacuate my king, but is it actually really safe over there? I don't know. I'm not sure how safe it is there because of bishop a3. A Is it really helped me? I don't think so. So let's have a look at this wild idea. Bishop takes, queen takes here. And if he comes down then, um, yeah, that worries me a little bit. I could even just connect my rook. Some weird move like king here. I think my king kind of liking that move actually king king just sliding up that's very interesting because I, I want to put my king somewhere it's not going that way I don't actually like it on the queen side I think this might be good I want to connect my rooks I want to stop a piece coming in here and I'm now guarding everything and my king seems in this position safe in the center the other point now being if I go knight here he takes I take the knight okay he stopped that plan again playing very well but now I've got to move a little bit quicker and I'm fully mobilized so I'm just going to now try to start kicking some of his pieces away now maybe I slightly prefer my position because he's got this discombobulated setup on the queen on the queen side so I think he should have gone a5 there continue his plan but let's gain some space is this position is still absolutely fine but i'm not really sure what that knight's doing now i'm going to get my rook out of the pin get it on an open file i'm not really calculating very far ahead here just playing natural simple moves and now this kind of move is kind of occurring to me as an opportunity but what about now this knight tries to eliminate some of his active bits and I open up this one? I like this because also a5 will open up that area of the board where he's quite strong. And this move allows me at least to take on a5. And I want to... Oh, I've got to watch out. I've just realized this bishop really is coming there. Okay, so I, I my, my idea of my last one. Okay, but now I can take here and at least win some material. He's moving very quickly, but I'm sh I am I've just realized there might have been some tactic with Bishop coming here at right moment. But he is he has played this very well. Even here is quite scary. Now I think my king is relatively safe, but this will attack my mm, I don't know, this is still a little bit scary. This one his knight improves its place. My pieces are really actually not not good. I've not put them on great squares at all. And he's got a lot of compensation here. Okay, I, I think I need to cover this one. So I need to move my bishop. I've got to be very careful here. At least my queen has potential to come over. But has he got a knight jump here? Like knight takes here. Okay, he's moved into my rook. That's a very peculiar move. Can I now come back? Takes, 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 check, king f1. I don't have a lot of time to calculate. And I want to make some exchanges. So I'm going to try this one. I am worried, of course, about this coming in. But exchanges 
might help me. And now he's going for some tactic on my rook. So I need to throw this in. But is my bishop lost? I'm in trouble here, aren't I? Wow, I've played this very badly. Very badly. I've just realized I've just dropped my rook. What an idiot. Okay. Mm, and my position is just crumbling here. Very bad play from me. Okay, I need to play this to give my bishop a square. I don't want to lose that bishop. So we'll take there with check at least. But my position is creaking a lot because his pieces are so active here. And I've just dropped a piece there, have I? No tactics here with knight b2. Uh... No, I'm I'm losing this. Wow, this could be another game I've lost. I played very badly here. My opponent has played pretty good. I'd love to get on the dark squares, but my queen can't come anywhere useful. Playing, he's playing very quickly. Um, queen here. He takes here. That's the problem. Hmm can't see a move here I can't see a move wow I'll see a little bit rusty aren't I well I can't see anything else let's just like if he takes here I don't know what I'm gonna do I think it's game over mm. well what can I say uh, the guy we'll have a look at his accuracy score afterwards because now I am getting a bit paranoid but I'm I'm completely lost here so let's see now do you guys think he was using a computer there or not I, I seem to be very good at catching them let's have a look uh can we get his accuracy score we can't because i'm on the cheap level okay is there no way to find it game review okay there is let's have a look see if we can uh find the accuracy score and it wasn't that high it was 89 Point nine percent, and I did throw this game away at some point. Hmm, I think I just played badly, didn't I? I'm getting too paranoid. It's around about here where I played this, and I should actually just consider taking the pawn here because of bishop g5. I played too passively. Okay, well there you go. Actually, um, you know, my opponent played ninety percent. Um, well played to him. I I didn't play a good game there. It happens. And uh, my rating now drops. We're going to have blips on the road. It's it's back to uh, 22.64. And uh, a disappointing game for me. I played a bit too passively. I should have considered that move of taking the pawn there. I didn't. And my opponent played with a lot of energy. And um, his sacrifice of giving of A5 was incredibly incredibly deep that one let's have a look what the computer thinks about that so i know you can't see this so well but the move a5 i mean this move which the computer gives us uh the best move is a is really a genius move that move which he played very quickly gets me a bit suspicious i know i'm paranoid i'm, I'm just just saying that a move like that uh, well, either great understanding because he gives up the exchange, but you can see how he foresaw long-term compensation with that move. And just the speed he played it. Hmm, I don't know. Interesting, but, you know. There we go. Anyway, okay, I won't spurs any aspersions after. I mean, I just like, I know I was being quite rude about Kramnik the other day, uh, but it's just like, I've just met so many of them myself who've been kicked off. I got some points back the other day as well on this account that you always wonder, which is the wrong way to think. I mean, A5, great move. My opponent played a very nice game uh, and he used full activity of his pieces. So uh, um, nice game by him. And my mistake was I actually just played a bit too passively around here. I mean, my position is certainly not as good as I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good. His king was never that weak. So I, misju I misjudged this. And I've got to learn, when you misjudge a position so much, when you think you're doing well and you see later on you're not, you've got to work out why Why would I misjudge it. And really, I think it was the potential of my pieces. They don't really have any potential. 
And that's why it was so important actually to consider grabbing um, in this position. I have a great position. Bishop d3 is okay, but in this position, I really had to consider the aggressive queen takes f7. And the thing I missed was that bishop g5 is going to be a very annoying move after that. And why didn't I consider the most aggressive move? You should always consider the most aggressive move. I did not deserve to lose for not playing it. I was playing too cautiously. Nearly always a mistake. Always consider the most aggressive option first. Um, uh, because if it works, it's the best way to play. You force the action. Take fate into your own hands. So my mistake, but we'll learn. Okay, uh, throw that like, throw that subscribe. Cheers. Bye for now.